Iman. What's up, man? You said I'm a walking advertisement. You're a bit of a walking advertisement. <laughs> Why dude. am I a walking advertisement? <laughs> because everything that you own was giving to you feel like a sponsor deal on TikTok. Like, Listen, bro. literally everything. Iman, you know, I would I would be upset about what you're saying, but luckily, due to my new everyday vitamin. No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, fuck, how, how could you be upset? I should be upset. I mean, you're getting shit for like for free. You know what I mean? You're winning. Yeah. Which is funny. You're saying because what was I saying right now? Uh, oh, yeah. I had a wedgie and I was like yeah. my my TikTok branded Patties. fucking, you know, because I get uh, sometimes it's just like stuff I'll request like free samples. But then right. other times like um, I'll actually have a dialogue with the company and we'll go back and forth about like, you know, what they're going to send me or what I can yeah. what I can do or how I can promote yeah. it. Like the biggest one I got was that guitar. Yeah. Oh, uh, that was pretty dope. So but look, sick. I'm saying that, bro, and I'm wearing the the dot band right nice. now. Yeah. Uh, you know what these are, right? You kind of gave me a brief explanation. I fucking love them, dude. Home. They're so cool. No, they're just like, and I'm not I'm not saying this to sell it. I don't get any money if you if you go oh, buy. You don't it. really. You gotta use my link on TikTok shop. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, it's pretty dope. It's like a, it's it's a digital business card. You yeah, just yeah, like yeah. hold it here. You hold it wherever to to scan it. This is a terrible ad for it because now it's not doing it. Now that Ooh, I need it to. It, it always there you go. Works. There you go. I think it's because I was holding the band kind of funky. Look, and now it's going 15 times. Oh. But yeah, look, you just tap it and it. That's so fucking brings sick. Up. Here, let me. Let me. So oh this, is, this is my regular home screen, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, screen. here's the ad. Here's the ad. Hold up. Hold up. Give it. Give it. Give it. Oh, give. man. Hold up. Hold up. There we go. No. I, I mean, it takes me right to there we go. his website, right? Your website? Yeah. Tree? Yeah, no, it's not a link tree. It's like a dot profile. Uh, oh, it's a whole profile. Yeah, you know, because uh, the previous dot cards you used to have to make your own third party website to have a link, but the new ones actually have a dot profile built in. There's no subscription needed at all. You can just Ooh. set it up and go. You're too um, good at this. Man. You're too good at this. <laughs> La last night, oh, I was so stressed because I, when you get sent stuff, um, you have a certain amount of time. It's okay. like, you know, you always hear YouTubers complaining about it. Like, they're always mm -hmm. like, like, uh, hey, guys, I was really stressed. I had to put out this video by this time because the brand deal I'm doing says I had uh, to, like, you know. Yeah, and yeah, that's yeah. kind of what it is. You get certain things and they're like, oh, you have, you know, three weeks. You have a month. You have whatever to, to put this out or you got to put it out by this day. Yeah. And I was I was dealing with some shit at home and I just completely forgot. And then, like, the, the due date crept up on me. To get everything done, so anyone who was following me on TikTok just one day got four ads, just back and forth. Oh just, no shit! Yeah, and I felt so bad, bro. Well, you were saying, bro, if you don't come, like, if you don't honor your part of the deal, yeah. you'll get like blackballed with these companies, blacklisted. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Blacklisted. yeah. Like, like you're the the. I guess it's almost like Uber. Like you mm -hmm. get a rating, yeah. So like yeah, it yeah. goes down pretty significantly. Wow. Um, and and you can't get shit as easily, but. Uh, but yeah, so Damn. and it's hard, you know, the TikTok thing is especially like, you know, because I'm not like big at all. Uh -huh. um, I'm still like on that grind of like trying to get up to that point. Right. Um, and like it, it, it's hard because it's one, you have to balance doing content and then you have to balance like these ads that you're doing. Because you can easily become just ads ads on your channel yeah. right like right now i'm a little disappointed with my tiktok standing mm -hmm. um with just my profile because i probably in the last two weeks i have more ads than, than oh, regular fuck. content yeah yeah yeah. and don't get me wrong the ads can be kind of rolled into regular content and there's still value there yeah but you know there, there is a point where it's like fuck man i need to you know <laughs> yeah need... yeah make some like original content type yeah exactly shit. it'd be like if your favorite youtuber every every week was like a, anyway guys today we're talking about raid shadow <laughs> legends yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> and next week it's like guys the popcorn industry is bullshit and what we should be <laughs> popping is some deals with raid shadow legends like yeah 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 i've got we all know when our favorite like content creator goes kind of hollywood type shit yeah you, you feel that shift it's like oh you God. know it's funny there's uh you you know mr gg right Mr. Gigi? Mr. Gigi? Did no. I not? Are you not the one that turned me on to Mr. Gigi? No, fuck no. Mr. Mr. Gigi. Gigi is a YouTuber and I love him. Uh -huh. Um, But uh, 
I remember in his early days, before he sold out Sham, uh, no, mm. <laughs> in his early days, he, he'd be, he'd be like, uh, he'd be like, anyways, guys, you know, I'm, uh, th- these guys reached out to me. I really like their stuff. I'm not just sh- selling you some bullshit like Raid Shadow Legends. And then now, <laughs> it, today, now if you go watch a Mr. GG video, he's like, guys, today's content is brought to you by Raid Shadow Legends. Oh <laughs> like, my God. <laughs> Dude, money talks, brother. Money talks. The amount of fucking money they're throwing at these guys to do like 30 second ads is And you know, insane. I can't be mad about it. No, how, how could you? Where no, is- like, you know, because in the, I remember, I think it's like a thing, right? That people, and, and this is a, a conversation that I'm glad we're getting into because yeah. I think people forget that, uh, I think people see like YouTubers yeah. and like content creators or whatever, and they're like, oh my God, you have the best job in the world. You get to do this and that. You're selling me something? What the fuck, dude? Uh, like, way to sell out. That's yeah, selling out? Right. Is how they make the money it's kind of part. The point. Yeah, it's kind of the like point. that's that's yeah. the deal. Like literally, w- what is one of the biggest shoe brands in the world? Nike. Nike. Okay, what's another one? What's the big one? Adidas, Converse. No, no. What, what's what's the big one with the the specific shoe? Specific shoe. The specific shoe. Come on. Hold on. The big shoe. Basketball players everywhere. Jordan. Yeah, there you go. Jordans, there yeah. you go. That is a product. Yeah, that that man, that family propped up forever, right? Because of that product, and everybody right. looks at Jordan and is like, "Oh my God, this is the, one of the greatest athletes in the world." I guarantee you, like a good 70 percent of that money that that family brings in mm-hmm. is from the fucking shoes. Like, oh, easily, yeah. But so, like, easily. but when people start going like, "Oh, you're selling out," I'm like, "How do you think that they pay for this shit?" Like, yeah. you know, yeah. Uh, being being a content creator is literally getting to a point where you can sell shit. Like you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I mean that's that's again how you have to make a living. You know. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean everything that that every you're, what you're holding in your hand that fucking bottle is a product. You know. Yeah. And so there are companies that have to push this shit. And why pay for you know, a whole? The, <laughs> sorry, yeah, what the fuck is that? Yeah, I was I was like, your water. Why are you making a noise when I open you? Sorry, God. So why pay for a whole fucking marketing campaign and shit when you have these users who are looking for something to promote, who are looking to make content full time? Uh, you could just pay them. I mean, not a super hefty amount to where you go in debt, but pay them, and they yeah. have this massive audience. There you go. There's your fucking audience. I mean, it's it's exactly. fucking genius. Do do, do I want to pay? However, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars, put some ad deals on whatever yeah, the fucking commercials and shit. On, yeah, on like when the fucking Price is Right is showing, right? You know, or you, you know, I don't want to have to pay Young Sheldon a ridiculous amount, yeah. so I play during the commercial breaks. But I can pay fucking Drew Gooden or Leon Lush, mm-hmm. you know, a few grand if yeah. even to throw out my shit and give them and it a goes commission. Way- further man yeah man tv dude is on its way out so the fucking no, old radio I commercials i don't know dude. television commercials the billboards that's old school shit man bro no i don't agree here let me hear it don't agree well t- so i i think that the, it's the same way that movie theaters we we're always talking like like you know movie theaters have been dying since 20 uh 2007 um you know yeah, what i mean yeah, like everyone's yeah. been been having that conversation but i think it's just the the way that uh that the, that that model mm-hmm. is being used, you know, because mm-hmm. no one's sitting down, plugging in their direct TV box and watching yeah. American Idol and then watching the commercials. And for the few people that do for your grandmas and grandparents that do do that. Yeah, they're getting up. They're getting a drink because we've all as a society just collectively said that, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, that's why commercials had to get really big and really yeah. bombastic and ridiculous because you had to catch the attention of, you know, Mr. Johnson when he was leaving to go get his next Miller Lite. Right. You right. Know? So, but now I feel like it's transitioning from obviously we're not doing like the direct TV kind of style of stuff or satellite cable, but now I'm paying for the cheapest version of Hulu mm-hmm. and I'm still getting ads. You know yes, what I mean? Like yes, you're, yes. you're paying for Paramount Plus, but yeah. you're still getting ads because not everyone can afford the $20, $30 a month thing right. times the seven streaming services that they're the big ones anyway. There's a bunch of other ones. Yeah. Um. You know? It's crazy. Yeah. So instead of paying for some major TV network, mm-hmm. right, to, to pay for a slot to put your commercial in, you're now paying a streaming service like Hulu, Netflix, yeah, exactly. right? And you can um, get the ad-free version of it, but you're paying, yeah. you know, 25, 30 bucks. Exactly, exactly. And it's fucking wild. So the model itself is kind of the same, you know what I'm saying? You have these 30-minute ads and shit, but mm-hmm. just the format that it's on is different. It's not so much cable anymore. Dude, I, I worked at Best Buy 2017, 
And there was this thing that was happening so often that the industry kind of coined a term for it, right? Yeah. So if, if you're a customer coming in and you're like paying for, uh, you're getting a fucking streaming device, right? Mm -hmm. you're, you're buying like these antennas and shit. We call you cutting the cord, meaning that your cable cord, like you're essentially severing it. Yeah. You're getting rid of cable. What year was that? 2017, bro. It was But insane. they were buying like streaming boxes? Buying stuff? streaming. Yeah, they're buying uh, Roku's, Fire Sticks, the whole nine. Which is why I, I'm just asking because like mm -hmm. I remember we got a new TV like in 2021. Yeah. And I think we still have the same fucking TV, but it, we we got it. And like, you know, before, it, uh, you know, you had to have the Roku, the Fire Stick or yeah, whatever. Yeah. And this TV we bought, it's all there. Built in? Yeah. Like, it's like the, I mean, it, it's not like a, a Roku built in. It's not an Amazon. Right. It, it's just a smart TV. It's a smart TV. Yeah. 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 So like, it, to me, that like, that was like. I was like, in 2017, didn't they already have smart TVs? That's why like, yeah. I was just thinking about it. But sorry, go ahead, go ahead. Well, they they necessarily didn't. The smart TV in 2017 was still seen as this cutting edge, like insane Oh, uh, you know, it was probably thing. more expensive. Yeah, it was more expensive. And a lot of TVs prior to that point did not have them. So the way that I would sell it when I was at Best Buy was essentially saying, this device allows your regular 2010 TV mm -hmm. to now be a smart TV. So you can still keep up with the industry, still keep up, but not pay an extra 500 bucks for fucking a TV that gets Wi-Fi. Yeah, That's exactly. That's essentially all it was, you know? Um, but yeah, dude, it was insane because that year, I watched the downfall of cable television. Mm -hmm. It was fucking nuts because you growing up, even I mean your parents' generation, even your fucking grandparents' generation, everybody watched cable. Everybody watched TV. We all tuned in Sunday night, watched the same fucking shows together, yeah. the same commercials, went to school or work the next day and talked about it, you know? Everybody and to see that whole thing just crumble was nuts. Dude, I remember the feeling mm -hmm. of being uh, of of watching Ryan Seacrest walk out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And be like, David Cook, thank you very much. That was a great performance by David Cook. We'll be right back as we count your votes to see if David Cook or David Archuleta will be our next uh, American yeah. Idol. And then like it would it would be like Charmin uh, Ultra Soft. Like you yeah, know, what I mean? yeah, yeah. And, like oh, everybody man. was like, oh man, dude, dude who's the commercials win? were all fucking yeah, yeah. Dude. And and then you know, then they announce it and yeah. um. And it should have been David Archuleta, but uh, no, he didn't win. He didn't win. No, David Cook won. Oh See, man! See, I okay. think our generation remembers David Archuleta a little bit more. Blew up. Well, he blew up, but then he was on iCarly, yeah. and they did the thing on iCarly where he he won. You know, like they, they did a spoof of American Idol. Oh no shit! Where really? David? No, no, no. So, <laughs> oh, dude, this is fucked. I feel like we talked about this forever ago. <laughs> this is fucked. <laughs> yeah. So, so real quick, we're gonna give you some American maybe, Idol maybe, lore. Maybe. Um, so American Idol singing show, obviously, a uh, bunch of, uh, you know, white people and the, the few people of color they let in would, would go sing. Token. And then, yeah, then the last like two black people would be kicked out like yeah, <laughs> three yeah, weeks yeah. before the finale. Um, <laughs> so these two white guys or Overstate, white girls would yeah. go head to head and, you know, we would vote on uh, America would vote. Mm -hmm. They text in mm -hmm. and whoever won got like a record deal. And, you know, all that. And uh, most of them didn't work out. But anyway. Uh, Dude, seriously. And which is wild because David Cook, the one that did win that I was just shitting on, I actually uh -huh. really liked his music he released. I really like, liked give me, it. Give me, give me like, uh, what, what genre? Uh, it, oh, it was the perfect Alex music. It was like oh, Nickelback, yeah. Hinder kind of vibe. You like that vibe. Yeah, 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 yeah. You like that shit unap unapologetically. I respect that. Yeah, no, no, no. I, uh, <laughs> I, I straight up people are like Nickelback. And I'm like, Dude, that would fucking fuck it. put it on louder. I'm just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You put me on a fucking Nickelback. Dude. Dude uh, got a point so, in my mind. <laughs> um no so they they did american idol it was david yeah. cook and david archuleta yes um david cook the whole time was like you know i'm with uh I, i'm doing because you know they're always like what's your sob story like you know why are you here yes and everyone's always like i've lived in my car for three years yeah, yeah, and yeah. my grandma lo lost her left nut back in 94 <laughs> and david cook's thing was that his brother i believe had cancer Mm, cancer that's it that's it mm. yeah and he, yep. he, he was like he, he was like so i'm doing this for you know my family and my brother and we've been through a lot and like it's always been my dream to do this blah 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 and i don't even remember david archuleta's uh sob story because it wasn't any good um mm. but anyway i was gonna say well yeah so they go head to head david cook of course wins yeah um and then i carly the writers of i carly i guess hated that david cook won so much that they did yeah. an i carly episode where uh they did a, a like in the i carly universe yeah. David Archuleta and another guy who dressed kind of similar to how they made David Cook dress, but he was no like, yeah, way. but he was like British in the show. Yeah. And he, the, the, the David Cook parody guy would be like, 
my grandmother or whoever, like my family members are sick and I'm trying to win and, you know, <laughs> yeah. it's, I'm going to save all the puppies and all this bullshit. Yeah. And then the cameras would turn off and he would be like, y'all are making me look like idiots. That, okay, like, that sounds familiar. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, 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 like he would come off like a really nice guy. Yeah. Like he was secretly an asshole and he didn't have like his grandma or whatever that was dying. Like it was all right. fake. Like that was the joke of the show. See, it, real quick. And I, I guess it never Go stuck ahead. out to me because I had never watched American Idol at that point. Dude, the last episode that I seen was probably fucking with uh, Ruben Stuttered, you know? Oh, so God. I've been super out of the American yeah. Idol game. Uh, so I didn't know that they were taking shots at a guy. I just yeah. thought they were doing some, wow. No, they were taking else. shots at David Cook. So then in the show, wow. I, Carly Gang tells everyone to vote for David Archuleta yeah. instead of David Cook. So then David Archuleta w- wins. But then the David <laughs> Cook guy crazy. gets upset and is like, you ruined my career because you made everyone vote for David Archuleta. So then they're like helping him do a music video and all this shit. And they wow. find out he's an asshole. And then they find out that like, you know, he didn't actually have a dying family member or whatever yeah. the fuck. David Cook's brother in real life died like a little bit after that. Oh, like no shit. Like they oh. did this whole thing making fun of David Cook, like that he's a liar, he's disingenuous, oh, and yeah. then real David Cook's brother died. Oh, that's fucked. And that's why that episode does not stick out to me because I guarantee when he died, they scrubbed the fucking episode. Oh yeah, w- when he died, they went like take that one out, take the it rotation. Out. Like yeah, yes, dude. So you only see clips about it on like online and shit. But I mean, as much as it probably cost them to bag a guy like David Archuleta, I'm sure they went a little out of budget for that episode. So oh, to yeah. have them never like rerun it, it's got to be because they. Yeah, you know like how many times I saw shit. the One Direction episode. You're like, right. Oh my god. Don't shove those fucking episodes down yeah, your throat. Man. But David Archuleta, yeah, he just went radio silent. Dude, look, I know, like, we're, we're talking about, like, our clips of the week or whatever, but this yeah. is the perfect se- segue. Can you pull something up on the laptop? I mean, it's, 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 so, what, there, go on YouTube. You're already yeah. there. Look up Quentin Reviews. Quentin Reviews. I think it's with an O, not an E. Okay, got it right here. Uh, it's a white guy kind of, kind of, there you go, white guy glasses, beard. So, Quentin Reviews, uh, this guy... You know, now that we're talking about iCarly for a second, uh, mm-hmm. I want I want to bring him up. I want to give him a huge shout out uh, here. Okay. B- before I show you this, can you screen record or whatever you're going to do? Yeah. So Quentin reviews. I was turned on by him. Uh, let me know when, when we're going. This man is fucking wild, dude. Really? Yeah. Are we screen recording already? It takes a fucking, there's a lag, dude. I don't know why it does that. Oh, but... you're fine. You're fine. Okay. There okay, we go. There, there we go. go. And it okay. might still cut off, but if it does, I'll add it's it okay. later. So uh quentin reviews man he did he did like a series where he came back and started talking about like iCarly i think is what kicked it off nice and oh, i love that dude Nostalgia. look let me show you let me show you where it fucking starts man <laughs> uh so oh god the series started three years ago how how hold up hold up before you before you look at this okay so this man does a deep dive mm-hmm. you know so it started off with uh he he did a a, a, a this is what turned me on to him originally he did The Reign of Fred Figglehorn. Okay. So he did like a whole series on who Fred was back in the early 2000s and all that. Okay. Okay. Oh, and yeah. F- yeah. Hi, he, it's Fred. he did a series called I Binged iCarly. Sick. Where he watched like the first half. Like I think there's six seasons. So he watched the first three seasons. Yeah. And he did a full recap. First off, do you want to guess how long a video like that is? An hour. Four hours and oh. 45 minutes. Oh. Dude, guess how many views? Okay, let me guess. Let me guess for real. Uh, uh, 10. 10? No, not, not sh- shooting a little high. Six okay. million. Damn. Six million views on a four, almost five hour iCarly video. Impressive. He did part two, the end of iCarly, where he did the latter half of iCarly. Yeah. Three and a half hours. Wow, dude. And then people were like, oh man, like you should do the Victorious show. Legendary. Love that show. Guess how many, guess how long the Victorious breakdown is? That's got to be, I mean, it didn't have a long run time. It's got to be two hours, two and a half hours. Part one? Yeah. Part one. Yeah. Five hours. Dude, what the And fuck? 34 minutes. No shit. No shit. And then he did part two, the end of Victor. Oh, I'm sorry. And the first part has nine million views. Oh, that's badass. Nine million views. That is genius, man. The end of Victoria. So the latter half. Guess guess how many uh guess how many uh or guess how long? How long? The end of Victoria. Uh, I mean what, four hours? So the first one was five hours and thirty minutes. The end of Victorious is eight <gasps> hours long, bro. What the eight fuck? Eight hours long. So look, let, let's let's do some math. So 
uh, we'll call the first part five hours for the first iCarly, three hours, so five, six, seven, eight, then nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. 21 hours Holy shit. of iCarly and Victorious content. And I'm guessing he goes episode by he episode. He goes episode by episode. And in the iCarly one, he does this this thing where he like in between seasons, he talks about like the iCarly merch that was released. Mm. He talks oh, about the Victoria's homework, man. Yeah, dude. He goes into like oh, the drama shit. with Ariana Grande and Liz Gillies oh, and all really? that shit. Like he like talks about the the McDonald's sponsorships that they did. He talks yeah. about the behind the scenes. He talks So not only does he talk about the episode itself and what went on in the episode, but the real life implications, he's right? Ta- he's not just talking about the show of iCarly and Victorious. He's talking about the culture. The culture of that's, that's iCarly that's it. and Victorious. It is oh, wild, is dude. Fucking genius. So then, so he did- real quick. It's Go so ahead. funny that like this is what like this is our generation's masterpiece. Right, we, right. This is our Mona Lisa. This is what we're gonna leave behind for generations dude, to come, dude. So. <laughs> We're not done yet. That's so, insane, dude. so he did Vic, uh, Victorious and iCarly. What comes after that? Sam and Cat. Sam and Cat. Oh, then he yeah. does a deep dive in because originally it started as iCarly and then it went the into show. Victorious. But then he, oh God, I forgot about this. In these, if y'all haven't watched this or if you're still with us now that we're going down this <laughs> rabbit hole, I guarantee they are. Check this out because yeah. this shit is wild. He talks about the in universe ramifications. Of how in iCarly she she fights Shelby Marks, yeah. who is played by Victoria Justice, wow. who plays Tori. Oh. In, so that way they're all in the same universe. You know what I mean? Yeah. He talks about the universe inconsistencies. He wow. talks about like how like uh, the uh, what is it the um, the the canon doesn't make sense. Like no the time shit. he gets wild. Like he gets real deep into this shit. Wow! And at one point he even talks about the canceled Gibby show. Oh, oh, really? There was a canceled Gibby show that they filmed a pilot for. Never aired, right? Just a pilot. Yeah, just a pilot. It never yeah. aired, but he got like some of the footage, I guess, from it or like some of the screenshots from <laughs> it. It's crazy. It's bro. wild, dude. Um, You're like, how the fuck did he get this? Yeah, so Sam and Cat. So again, he does it in two. Oh, I'm sorry. Sam and Cat has three parts. Yeah. Guess how long? And I feel bad because uh, he obviously does a lot of work and these views kind of went down. Not. I mean, it's. No, it's still a lot of views, but still. Sam, the, so the first episode of Sam and Cat. Uh, or he broke it down. Four point four million views. Guess how long? I don't know, dude. I got a little older around that time, so I didn't watch that show. I didn't like either. Two seasons. I don't know. Fucking two hours, three hours, five. How do you get that much content? Five fucking hours. Sam and Kat? Hey, I'm proud of him. But I mean, I I applauded. But so what Sam the and hell? Cat Part Two. One point eight million views. Guess how long? Three. Six and a half. I gotta stop going low. Yeah. <laughs> I gotta stop going low, man. Okay. Part three of Sam and Cat, 2.2 million views. This is the breakdown of the show. How long do you think that is? Part three. Five. Six. Nine and a half hours, bro. Of just Sam and Cat? Nine and a half hours of just Sam and Cat. How? Dude, wild. And you know what? You talk about anything for nine and a half fucking hours. You know what the wild part is, though, for me? What's that? Uh, The baffling... Look, real quick, I haven't watched Quentin in a minute. I'm going to watch him later because he has another video okay. called The Baffling Lore of Nickelo- of Nicktoons Unite, which was a video game, I believe. <laughs> I'm so excited. Anyway, um, but uh, that video, his newest video, is seven hours long. Wow. My man makes long form content. He, go, go ahead. Check it out. That is impressive, dude. Wow. Look, look at the, the times for these yep, bitches, Seven dude. hours, nine hours. Fucking wild, hours, dude. Eight hours. Yeah, that's ridiculous. <laughs> Hey, but clearly he's got a dude. My man has crazy fucking passion for this shit. Yeah, it is. While he he talks about how he has like spreadsheets and like full like just like all this information that he's just had to collect. Yeah, fucking. I mean, of course, dude. He's probably yeah. like made phone calls, got in touch with really important people. Got yeah. like all access behind the scenes shit. Dude, he's wild. He's yeah. wild. You can't just like find pilots for episodes that never aired. You know what I mean? Well, from my understanding, from what I recall, he like uh, did a break or. He had like people that like reached out to him. Yeah. That were like helping him uh like find some of these things, like uh, getting mm, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then I mean Which is dope because he builds a community and then they help him expand you build a community. this lore, you and know. So let's think about this, dude. While we were gone, some shit happened with Nickelodeon, specifically the studio that made these shows. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't have, I wouldn't 
I would imagine there's a lot of defectors who are happy to divulge some information about That's true. this fucked up situation that that's you know. true. And he touches on it a little bit. He tries not to make it too much about Dan Schneider and some of his because he's that. yeah, because he's trying to all that. <laughs> They're in your brains, the brain worms, yeah. bro. They reprogrammed you. Um, oh my god, where are my shoes? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I am the Nickelodeon logo. <laughs> so but, that is nuts, man. But yeah, no, we were talking about him and I was just like, holy shit. Yeah, yeah. Or that's, we're talking about iCarly, and I just remembered that that little tidbit of information that I had. Dude. He's wild, bro. He's, so Deserves way more subscribers. Yeah, I mean, applause to this guy, dude. I'm I'm making my fucking midnight show stuff, and I'm like thinking about, oh, I got to do two hours of research. Oh my god, life is so hard. This fucking guy, man, that is dude. He's impressive. talked about how he got like burned out. Yeah, something. like he's got. If you get burned out, and other it's, YouTubers get burned out for doing like hour long videos and stuff, mm -hmm. these are like work days worth of videos. Like, and even if this is, I mean, eight hundred ninety five thousand subscribers, this is his full time job. Even if it's your full-time job, to dedicate that much time and energy to one thing, even if you do nothing else all day, you will burn the fuck out. This is just too much of one thing. Like, it's got to be, I don't know how he does it. And I wonder how long it takes for him to make an episode. Dude, I don't know. Well, look, if you scroll down, mm -hmm. you can see some of, like, the, the breaks between some of them, I think. Oh, no, because yeah, it, it's long enough to where, uh, you know... It, 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 when it was more recently, you could tell that it was like uploaded four months ago, uploaded yeah. today. You know what I mean? Like you could yeah. see that there's a fucking huge chunk yeah. of Which, time. So at this point, he's making like three movies in yeah. one of these. Like it's very impressive. Well, I mean, look, wild, man, shout bro. out to Quentin Review. And dude. you know what's you know Big what's ups. even crazier? What's that, dude? I I've watched every single one of those. Oh, no shit. Full, like, cover to cover. I don't, I don't know what's more impressive, man. I've watched every single one. <laughs> I think it's paid to do this shit. Dude, I've listened to every single one of those just because they yeah. were so fascinating to me. Yeah. And I would, first off, I listen to all of them. I uh -huh. can't tell you. You know, like, sometimes you watch, like, a YouTuber's 18-minute video, and you'll uh -huh. see, like, and now, and now, guys, we're going to, like, yeah, you'll yeah, see, yeah, like, yeah, the little... fuck up of the edit. You know yeah. what I mean? I have never seen a fuck up. No shit. Never seen a fuck. And if there was one, he edited it out before I saw it. Like yeah. in the YouTube creator thing. Wow. Um, the YouTube editor. Um, but how wild That's to have impressive, that much, man. you know. Good for him. Um, but also, what a nightmarish fucking, uh, how do you say it? Uh, what a nightmarish like finalization that yeah. probably has to be. That's what I'm thinking about. He has you know to what I mean? insane. You know how many tires. times I sit back and I watch two and a half minute TikTok and I'm like, fuck, I'm tired of watching this. Yeah. Can you imagine sitting through? Eight hours, nine oh, hours, God, a whole work day. No way. But hey, enough about this fucking guy, man. Shout out to Quentin Reviews. Go look up this guy, man. Give him his props. Like his videos. This is fucking sick. I thought about doing something, man. Tell me. And I know that you saw a really uh, big time movie. Probably the biggest movie of the year so far. You I, don't, know? I don't know what you're talking about, but go ahead. We'll get into it. But uh, I would like to do uh, introduce a segment. Go oh, tell me. On air, real time, let's do it. Like I, We were gone for a long time. Uh -huh. We missed a lot of shit. I think for the foreseeable future, we should introduce one topic of something major that happened while we were gone. Oh. And call the segment while we were gone. I like it. Like I that? like it. Hell hey, yeah, man. We don't got to get too political and COVID and shit. We all know. But like, shit like P. Diddy, you know, the Will Smith slap. Oh yeah, that's while true. While we were gone, you know, that's I wanna, true. I get into some well, of that this shit. other thing while we were gone yeah. that kind of happened culturally, that I think was really relevant, is this guy named Quentin Review. No, <laughs> <laughs> I knew you were cueing some shit up. <laughs> you can always tell the inflection in my voice when I'm yeah. like getting ready. It's hard. You and Myra, dude, I fucking I can't joke around with y'all anymore. I know you too well because man. yeah, like y'all y'all you know hear the light inflections in my I voice. I see the, the darting eyes as you're cueing the fucking bit. <laughs> I went for the zipper to come down and fucking Quentin come out. It's like, oh my god! <laughs> I am Quentin reviews. Oh, uh, <laughs> fucking hilarious. Um, anyway, but uh, yeah. Um, oh, real quick. Yeah, let me hear it. Uh, let's be quiet for just a second. What? Uh, this guy made like twenty <laughs> hours of iCarly and Victoria's content. <laughs> Thank you. I just needed it for the clip. Okay, okay, okay. okay. I was like, where are you I'm going to splice that into the TikTok clip when okay. <laughs> we talk about that. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, But yes, the things that we missed. Yeah. I mean, fuck it, dude. I, I mentioned it already as an example, but while we were gone, during the biggest award ceremony, one of the biggest nights in Hollywood, happens annually, the Oscars, one of the biggest stars 
went Quentin on stage. <laughs> Quentin reviews. <laughs> it's gonna be my it's gonna be my bit forever I now. Go ahead. Oh my god. Go ahead. One of the biggest stars in Hollywood went on stage and bitch slapped one of the biggest comedians in Hollywood on live television. Did you see it live? What were your thoughts? What happened while we were gone? Man, I didn't see it live when it happened. I saw it like on a Facebook clip. Um, okay. Yeah. Because some old person sent it to me, so it was through Facebook. Um. um and I was just like, oh. Yeah. Okay. Like I didn't have a lot of thoughts at the moment. Yeah. And then because I think I was in the middle of something, and then later on I sat down. Your brain was somewhere else. Huh? Yeah. I started seeing everybody else posting about it. I was like, let me sit back. Uh huh. Because all I saw was the. Mm. You know, I didn't mm. see what led up to it. Mm -hmm. So I um. I, uh, I I sat down and I was like, let me get the full context of what was going on here. Right. So I, I watched the 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 video and uh, when he called Jada GI GI Jane, GI Jane, yep. And yep, then yep. Will Smith goes and slaps him. Uh huh. I was like, man, I don't. So for the Chris Rock slap, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Will Smith slaps him. Uh huh. So for so for Chris Rock to be up there saying that him getting slapped. Yeah. I have never seen. Like genuinely, in that setting with what's going on, I've never seen a more pussy thing in my entire fucking life. On who? On whose end was it pussy? Will Smith. Mm. Because that's what entertainment is. Yeah. That's what those shows are. Yeah. That's what Chris Rock is. Yeah. Like comedian. Exactly. And I and I get it. Don't get me wrong. If somebody said some shit about uh -huh. my wife, yeah, I would feel a way too. Yeah. But you know what? Also. They are too, and I know some people don't like to think of it this way. Yeah. And you can tell me if, if you think I'm wrong. But like two of the biggest, biggest in the world, mm -hmm. black stars mm -hmm. that have so much respect and so much following, yeah, at yeah. least give that man, mm -hmm. the person who has worked for for who for who he is, the race he is in his industry, yeah. to get to that point. And you being another pillar. A, uh, of that a, community in that industry at a predominantly like white event exactly yeah yeah why yeah. why would you bring both of you down like that yeah because th that's all and, and, and even let's take the race part out of it yeah. even if they're just people don't take you and someone else down like that because it, mm. it fucks with both their careers mm -hmm. you know it makes them both look stupid and then not only that how fucking terrible for these two really respected black both black actors mm -hmm. and you know comedians and stuff and bring yourself down to that level. Like, yeah. you know, and also the fact that the, the thing that made it even worse for me was Jada's bitch ass at the end of it, mm. not even having the fucking balls. To come out and support her. her exactly. Man or, to, mm. to be like, I didn't need him to do that. And I'm like, well, why the fuck would you do that? Like, that is you nuts. know what I mean? Like, yeah. one, don't do that. Like, like, don't get me wrong. That's something like you go backstage and you're like, hey, man. Um, I, I didn't that's appreciate a, that's that. That's a backstage scandal. Didn't appreciate that. Yeah, that's a exactly. Scandal. Exactly, dude. Straight up, me and you have mm -hmm. had shit in the past mm -hmm. where I didn't pop off on you if something upset me or whatever, or right. we upset each other, whatever. We talked about it. We worked it out. Mm -hmm. We we were like, hey man, we're brothers. Let's do this, whatever. Right, right. That's right. that's the place for that kind of thing, exactly. bro. There were no fucking TV cameras around. And we still handled it cordially, you know. Yeah, yeah. but but even like. But that should be like as humans, we should do that. Right. But like, I can't imagine like doing that. Yeah. But yeah. how did you feel about it when you saw it? So I'll I'll kind of paint the picture, man. It was 2021 uh, or 2020. It doesn't matter. Uh, a few years ago, I was laying in bed with my old lady and had to go shit. Got up, wanted to go take a shit. And you know, as you do in 2020, whatever the fuck, you scroll social media. Mm -hmm. I'm scrolling social media, brother. And 20 minutes after it happened, of course, it's being blown up all over the internet. And so I'm on Instagram and I see the a clip of the Oscars. And for some reason, this clip just looks, it, it doesn't look like your regular clip. Like the energy just looked different, even from the split second that I saw it, right? And so the clip replays and I see what happened at the beginning of the clip. I see Chris Rock standing on stage, Will Smith gets up. The slap happens. The video is muted, so I don't see, I don't hear the audio. I just see what's happening. And I'm seeing, like, this doesn't look like a fucking, something's weird about this. Like, it's not a skit or yeah, something. Skit. Like, this is, like, real and shit. And the Oscars is known for those skits, especially with a guy like Chris Rock hosting it. I was like, oh, it's whatever. But this looks different. He goes back to his seat. The infamous, keep my wife's name. As good as an actor as Will Smith is, and as seasoned as he is, nobody is that good at acting. The fucking way that his 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 complexion changed was 
fucking crazy. I said, I said, okay, first off, this is not a skit. Second off, Will Smith is a fucking crazy person. Man, you know what though? It's gotta. That, that was my thoughts. But. Yeah, it, that's gotta be on Jada though. I feel like Jada has put that fucker <laughs> through so much. <laughs> it's real. If anybody can drive a man crazy, it's a toxic fucking uh, partner. Dude, that I just, I, I don't know. Like, I don't know how. I, I don't know how that man could do that, especially. And I don't know <sighs> how he could do that, and for his wife to not even like. I, I, not even not appreciate because like not like oh you should appreciate your man if he beats someone up for you or some shit mm-hmm. but just like not even be like you know what uh even if she would have come out and been like look do i agree with how will handled it right then and there right. no but he was defending my honor my husband was like you know because i deal with this illness or whatever that yeah. she does deal with which she does mm-hmm. you know and you know i think emotions were really high and i don't mm-hmm. think he should have done that but i understand he was he was doing it for our family because he doesn't he i wouldn't let someone talk to him like that so i understand how he doesn't want someone to talk to me like it that. was a very emotional night feelings were ramped up you know it was already exactly and i guess that just pushed him there's there's she for somebody who talks for a living exactly you would think that bro. she would know the importance of using verbiage in yeah. the public eye like certain it's- it's always wild to me when actors, comedians, people like you said who are in the especially I don't want to be rude. And yeah. I know everyone is their own person and everyone is not just their partner, but when you are married, when you spend so much time with someone as articulate mm-hmm. and who always knows what to say and is always very careful about what he says being yeah. Will Smith, yeah. I don't know how you as your partner don't pick up on that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because my 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 wife is like that. Mm-hmm. She's very much like she and I'm not always like that. You remember in high school, I was just ridiculous. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I pride at yourself of being an asshole. Yeah, but like she has a way of like being very intentional about what she says, okay. and she tries to like keep that in mind with the specific words she's using. And I'm not even saying like just like what she's saying, yeah, but how she's saying it. You know gotcha. what I mean? Like if uh, if she's like like she's the type of person that that won't say. I hear you. Mm-hmm. She'll say, I understand you. Like mm-hmm. she wants you to know the difference yeah. between those words. Mm-hmm. So like me, myself, as we've lived together and as I've heard her talk, I catch myself being like that as well. I'm it's trying a to fucking superpower. Yeah. You, you kind of, you feed off your partner and you ride their vibe and like you yeah. figure out what it is. And I don't know how them, yeah. you know, him being so very like that and right. her who talks for a living has podcasts, does all these things. I don't understand how she couldn't, like yeah. put on your PR hat for a second yeah. and be like, how exactly. can I, you know? Exactly. I mean, come on, dude. Like, fuck your public image, honestly. Like, because what it seems to me is maybe she wanted to distance herself from that situation, even if it was her husband or ex-husband. So he sets the ship on fire to save everyone. And she jumps off and says, I don't know why he set the fucking ship on fire. That's so lame. Um, Especially when the fire was set for you. For you. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I'll give a whole prognosis, right? To what I think that whole situation, the whole mindset behind that. Mm. But I to, to, I want to add on to the point that you just made. And it's about to get very controversial up in this Tell bitch. me. Tell me. Jonathan Majors. Okay. He caught some serious flack in the past year, past two years. He lost everything, right? And, and then he just got kicked out of his Avengers movies. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He got replaced next, by our boy, Donnie Jr. RDJ. Oh, which <laughs> we is... so much to talk about. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> um... You know, feel how you want about that case. Never been a battered partner in my life. I'm not even going to speak to that. But there was a piece of evidence that was released, and it was an argument that was secretly recorded between them two. And this argument started to lead people to believe that Jonathan Majors was an abuser. And in the audio, Jonathan Majors is like mad at his girlfriend or wife. I'm not too sure. Partner partner. of some form. Yeah. Saying that, I guess she was out drunk being belligerent. And he was saying that... I'm not a regular person. I have to represent something. I stand for something. I mean, we're talking about a guy who, for the first time in United States military history, put a black man as the face of the fucking military. This guy was on his way to do incredible things in Hollywood, you know? And as your partner, as that person's partner, you That's have like he to was respect in the two that. biggest movies that year. Yeah, dude. He oh was in God. he was in Ant Man. Yeah. Being the new Thanos that exactly. they were setting up. I mean, he uh, was in Creed Three, dude, which yes. was Michael B. Jordan's debut directorial deal and, like, and the all this best fucking movie of the franchise if you ask me sorry but anyway but like just setting the stage a little more like yeah. there was so much going for that guy like, 
he was being handed a mantle. Hollywood was 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 giving this guy the fucking throne. And you know that the tabloids are waiting in the back to fuck that up. So it's just like with Barack Obama, you didn't see Michelle Obama acting crazy out here like she's dating some regular person and vice versa you know i had this thought like if my lady she does uh social media uh online marketing and stuff right mm-hmm. and if she grew some major marketing firm and was in forbes 30 for 30 in 10 years i'm gonna fucking tighten up dude you'll hear my language on this podcast change you'll hear i'll clean up some things i'll censor myself i'll be careful how i speak about her because now we represent something you know? Yeah, and you know, I, I that stuff I already think about. Right. Like personally. Yeah, we had a conversation, me, me and her. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, no, like I was gonna say, like that stuff I think about because like I put out uh I, I put out content for myself. Mm-hmm. And in certain content I'll be like like I made a video about Scooby Doo because I was bitching about the new Scooby Doo show that came out. Yeah. And I was like, they got bitches here doing and I was like you got Should it. I be talking like that Man, now, yeah. you know? <laughs> and and, and, and there, uh, there's a level you have to find with being genuine to yourself, mm. but also choosing your words correctly. You know, I, I I think some people take it as like, oh, you're censoring yourself for family friendly content and all that. Like, I'll still curse, but it's like how I refer to people. Yeah. You know, like yeah. in that way, like, for example, when I was talking about the Scooby-Doo thing, I said these bitches referring to to Daphne and Velma in the show, right? Yeah. And do I want my my kid growing <laughs> up seeing that I referred to women as bitches? Right, you know, do right. I do I want if I do gain a significant following for people to be like, oh, that's how he feels about women in you gotta that way? You got to think about things different. Do you feel like do you feel like that line is one side you have staying true to yourself mm-hmm. and the other side of that line is is pleasing the audience, being an entertainer. Is that where the struggle is or is it more so being true to yourself? And and maintaining an image for your family and and your kid when they get older to look. And- you know, I mean, it's always partly that, right? But yeah. for me, it is more so staying true to myself, but also finding a balance of entertainment. Right. You know what I right, mean? Right, because right. like, th- there is a level of of people. People, <sighs> there's you know that's what break times for. I'm not going to censor myself. Um, yeah. There is God. I'm trying to think of a way to say this without sounding really shitty. But back and edit it. <laughs> there are different people, okay. you know, th- there are different people as far as like how they intake things, how they speak to each other, how okay. they do that. And I think that when we're making content, at least uh, the creators at large are making content, they make content for people who are themselves because mm-hmm. not everyone mm-hmm. can be themselves, if that makes sense. Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah like yeah, they're, yeah. they're like your average everyday person, your blue collar oh. worker who goes to work. They're going to say how they feel. They're going to tell it like it is. They're yeah. going to say if they don't give a shit about your pronouns. They're going right, to, you right, know, right. and whether or not you agree with that, that's just how they are. They speak. You know, and then Mm -hmm. or they speak just their truth completely. Mm -hmm. And then you go up a level and Mm -hmm. and not money wise, not not, uh, you know, class wise, Mm -hmm. but you go up a level to where people are in a little bit different of a position. They're running Mm -hmm. a nonprofit. They're the financial advisor with the the city that they work in. They're very under a microscope. They're more in the public eye. They can't do that. Yeah. They can't say those things. They're representing the major corporation that they work for now. It's not just about them. Exactly. They they, they have to carry themselves a little bit differently. And then there's a level above that that is people that are the thing. People Mm, that represent. set the fucking standard. Exactly. And then there you still have to watch it. Because now you're representing yourself, which at that level is your (laughs) brand. Even if you're not literally selling something, you are a brand. Like. Like when you're, uh, for example, there's this guy that we met. Um, his name's Zay Zay. He does stuff like with San Antonio Spurs. He's a talent. Okay. He, he's like the guy there, like doing the announcements. He oh, that's so sick. Does hosting for things. Super cool guy. Very genuine. Yeah. But he himself is a brand. You know mm-hmm, what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, so he mm-hmm. has to carry himself a certain way. Has to talk mm-hmm. a certain way. And Zay Zay, every time I've met him. Is, and I don't even know if he tries. He has that perfect balance of being true to himself yes. and being his brand. Yes. And, you know, and I think you have to do that. And I think for content, going back to that, when you make content, you have to make content for the widest audience. And the widest audience is the first level of people. Yeah. The people that are just going to say it how it is. Uh So when you're a content creator, you're like putting that middle. Yeah. You know, where you're making content for those people, but you're also representing something. It's not just you. Mm -hmm. So you have to make content that appeals to those people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. While still protecting your interests. And if there's one thing that those people hate is phoniness. 
Exactly. And they can smell it from a mile away. And it's away. hard because there's a level between being phony mm-hmm. and making sure that you're providing content that is valuable. Yeah. But is not, uh, I don't know the right word for it, but that isn't just shock for the sake of shock or right. saying things for the sake of saying things. Exactly. Because that's know? also a level of phoniness, which is on the opposite end of the spectrum. Mm-hmm. You know, and to your point, dude. Speaking on that, like I guess uh, tier list, right? Mm-hmm. Or class list. I don't know how to, yeah, yeah, worth that. But um, the people, even at those higher levels, who live in a world where they can't be authentic themselves, will flock to people who can be authentic because it's like almost living vicariously through. Yeah, you know exactly. Uh, so that, that's very, that's a good point. It's very fascinating. You never thought about it like that. Yeah, and it's it's you know I think that that's a thing that me myself I'm always. Yeah, I'm always thinking about Being like conscious of right. Yeah, and and sometimes you fail at it. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes you know you you got to figure it out. But um, but at the end of it, it's just while it's something you think about. For me, I'm just having fun making content. You know. Yeah. Um, but it's a grind, dude. It's, it's a work a in grind. progress. It's all it, this shit's new, man. All this shit is new, dude. Yeah, what, man. I mean, but yeah, to bring it to bring it full all the way around. Um, you know, the reason that we I drew up the uh, the Jonathan Majors example. Yeah. Was because. You know, he in that piece of audio stressed the importance of if you're not a regular nigga, if you're not a regular bitch, right, then your partner must make the sacrifice and understand that if I'm going to live this incredible lifestyle afforded to me by this person's hard work, I have to be a reflection of that. And it seems like Jada either doesn't get it or doesn't give a fuck or it's just so up her own ass that that she can't see the implications of her actions, yeah. you know, because now the family's a laughing stock. There, I, I told, and Jaden was already doing that. <laughs> Jaden was on his way, but you excuse him because he's a child, right? Well, what the fuck is her excuse? You know, I, I told my girlfriend this. Um, you no, know, real and, quick, and, I used to talk a lot of shit about Jaden. I like um, the guys. And you know what? I, yeah. I, I open myself up yeah. and uh, I do like Jaden. He's a cool guy. Jayden his business ventures are, are, are cool. His his music he does is great. Yeah. Um, he has that just water company. Yes, sir. Uh, it's fucking dope. Anyway, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, they, they raised the fuck out of those kids, especially in such a weirdo place like Hollywood, man. It could have yeah. been a lot worse. Uh, yeah. So Willow Smith, Jaden Smith, I'm, I'm fans of them both, honestly. Um, but I was I was talking to uh, my lady about this in 2018. And I was saying that like Will Smith. I'm so intimidated by him because I just imagine myself like if I was dating Willow Smith or some shit like that's the kind of person you walk into their house and fuck the clout. If you if any of you wasn't a famous person, the, the the empire that he had built and the the family unit that he had established to be walking into that as a newcomer. Hey, I'm dating your daughter. Those are the kind of guys that you fear, not the fucking you better all fucking kick your ass if you you know what i mean yeah yeah like literal bad boys too yeah but without the the guns on their hip like exactly. just like you just they demand respect exactly. because of how they carry themselves and and, and the, the the family unit that they've mm-hmm. built you know and you're, you're asking essentially to be a part of that and you gotta like prove yourself like those are the guys those are the type of fathers that back in the day when i was a younger dude would intimidate me you know mm-hmm. It was never so much the tough guy thing. And that's how I always thought of Will Smith, man. And he had did such a good job with his family. It seemed like his, he and his wife were doing good. Um, but, dude, she opened her mouth. And now I think the world feels what we feel. Like, they're they're a laughing stock, man. And they're not to be taken serious. You know, at least Will Smith and Jada, you know. Yeah, like, uh, you know, Will Smith, man, for him in particular, it sucks because he is such such a talented dude. dude so good you know what i mean i just watched i am legend two weeks ago man i almost fucking cried every every uh actor or i, I guess every like black actor mm-hmm. who comes up wants to be will smith you know yeah. every actor in yeah. general wants to be will smith but i mean yeah. like the trajectory of his career yeah going from being a TV star to a movie star to his music to right. all that shit, right. and you know even even like uh, Childish Gambino makes fun of that, like in in, in his songs, right? Mm-hmm. Like uh, black actors who come up and then like they they like do the rap career and all that. <laughs> yeah, Will Smith made that yeah, because he and he was that. successful he at that. that. Yeah, and then everyone else came along. Mm-hmm. And no one could tell Fifty that he he or sorry Fifty that uh, <laughs> <You're> <laughs> that, fucking racist. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's his they name. Like that's his name. No, that's his name. <laughs> Fifty. No, no one told fucking Fifty that that he couldn't act. Uh, 
Okay, I thought you I thought you accidentally called Will Smith Fitty Sid. I'm no, like, how the fuck no. did you make that connection? I said 50, <laughs> okay, and I was okay, like, I Fitty, it. sorry. Fitty. No, you're right with the yeah, Fitty. Thank you, thank what you. I, I, didn't, I don't want to mispronounce his name, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, you're right. Mr. Fitty, dude, check <laughs> this out. Fitty. Now we're getting real juicy. Ooh, Good. let's turn into a fucking gossip mag so me. quick. <laughs> tell me, tell me. You're talking about Will Smith and how he pioneered the rapper to actor pipeline, right? Yes. Well, there's a person that uh, you know, but you don't know, uh, who actually did it. And he's in the shot right now. He's also the person that I believe drove Will Smith to the point of slapping Chris Rock on the Oscar stage. Again, he's in the shot right now. He's he's right above the... Uh... What did all you do? <laughs> <laughs> Just so out of touch. <laughs> you tell me what Ali did. I... <laughs> no, my man, Ali... No, he fucking uh, Tupac. No, I know who Tupac is. What do you I, mean? I, in the in the context of this conversation. Oh yeah, you know yeah, what yeah. I mean? like um, like who did I, who did I that picture of uh, of Snoop you Dog fucking right yeah? Who said Snoop Dogg? No, I, I said I, I said why Snoop Dogg like Andre three thousand. <laughs> you cannot look at that photo of Snoop Dogg and tell me he does uh, not look like Andre three thousand. Right, like Holy that's shit. like look look that's Andre three thousand <laughs> and that's yeah. Big Boy running away. Okay. <laughs> It's crazy. <laughs> um, no, dude. So you you're pretty familiar with like Jada Smith and Tupac's relationship. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they were lovers before Will Smith was even. Oh, of course, of, you of know? course, of course. Um, Tupac was a rapper in the early, early, early '90s. You could even say late '80s when he started. You mm -hmm. know, he did the movie Juice in the early '90s, and he was the rapper turned actor, and he was fucking comparable to will smith's level of acting yeah i mean this guy studied acting or yeah he studied acting at a fucking uh yeah school of the arts you know tupac very talented dude yeah ridiculous i think he has Insane. a bright future in the inter <laughs> entertainment industry. i wish he dropped more music dude i mean the fuck <laughs> i know instead of just dropping himself um, <laughs> oh my god i can't believe i just made that joke i fucking worship tupac <laughs> no but um dude and so Jada Smith always talks about publicly. She does bro. not shut up about oh, fucking no. Pac, dude. So it's like Tupac was this fucking gangster. Mm -hmm. He was this bad boy. All the women loved him, right? Uh, he had eyes for a second for Jada Smith, but she at the time didn't have eyes for him because of his lifestyle. But in hindsight, she's like, I fucking loved him. He was so this and that. Mm -hmm. to, uh, Will Smith, even in his book, said he always had was living in Tupac's light. He always wanted to be seen the way that Jada sees Tupac. Yeah. You know, so I think that at the Oscars, bro, he may have saw that as his moment to do some Tupac shit. This moment to do some Tupac shit? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Like, you die. <laughs> You're fucking nuts, man. <laughs> but but that's that's my prognosis. You know what, you dude? Die. I mean, th there's there's uh, you've got to be <laughs> a special type of person. Yeah. To marry and be with someone who 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 has a former partner like that you know someone that they really look up to whether it yeah. was a marriage boyfriend girlfriend yeah. and they passed away tragically you got to be a special type of partner <laughs> to, to to be like that yeah um i get it i get it yeah but they weren't fucking together <laughs> yeah yeah no you're right you're right they weren't together you're right. Jada's romanticizing I some know. shit that didn't Dude, occur. She's even like lying and shit about their fucking relations. Yeah, it's it's cringe, brother. I, I think it's just I think it's the ultimate clout chasing. Ooh. I think that's just what it is, bro. Ooh. You know, it it'd be like if if some random woman just came along and went like Kurt Cobain and I were secretly dating. And yeah. who who are you? Yeah. Which happens, but they're never yeah. famous. They're just crazy. And you write them off. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. uh, we haven't listened to my mother since she said that. I'm kidding. <laughs> um, no, but like legitimately, like yeah. th there was nothing there. Like yeah. I would get it if oh, her yeah. if her and Tupac were in like this, like, uh, you know, they were in a relationship. Even if they weren't even together that long, if they were actually in a relationship at the time of his right. death, I'd be like, you know what? They had soul ties, bro. You can't yeah. change that. And that's so tragic. They weren't together. Dude, he was engaged to Quincy Jones's daughter when he died. Yeah, he was man. so beyond her. And she's dragging this shit out. Oh, God. Yeah, that's super cringe, dude. Holy shit. Yeah. Like, it's just <laughs> the fact that she, like, is wild to me. So that's why I was saying, like, it takes yeah. a special kind of partner to deal yeah. with that shit, even if they were together. Yeah. It takes a stupid ass partner to put up with that shit. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's true. And, that's true. and I'm just like, because they weren't. 
together yeah. bro you know what i mean <laughs> like if i was with a girl and and her ex of multiple years died and she felt mm. way about it i'd be like you know what girl i understand you guys had history y'all had history there there especially if it was when you were younger right you know people don't want to admit it and they want to be like oh well like you and me now like why are you even worried about them mm. but you create soul ties with those people That's like true, you know what man. i mean That's and true, like yeah. you gotta be to a certain level you have to understand that because we're all people yeah you know with that being said, Jada has no fucking right. Like no. she can mourn a friend, yeah, you know, obviously. Mm. But like to her, for her to to kind of like idolize or for Will Smith to even feel like that about Tupac, I'm just like, mm -hmm. that is so. It's really fucked up, man. Fucking stupid, and that's like, torture. That's it, torture. It, it would be like it, it would be like fucking uh, Jason Momoa. <laughs> It'd be like Jason Momoa dying and my wife oh. being like, you'll never be Jason Momoa. And I'm like, like what, what are you talking about? about? <laughs> what do you mean? Babe, you don't get it. I passed by him at an airport one time. It's like, what the yeah, fuck? Like, That's bro. it? Oh, man. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy when you fucking put it, it like that. It would straight up be like my wife telling me, like, 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 like you know, we find out someone dies, she'd be like, "You'll never be welcome to our generals." Uh, <laughs> oh no, is he alive? You're like deep cut. Yeah, I hope so. I don't know if he's dead. Dude, that's my Roman Empire. <laughs> I, I think about him like once a week. I feel so bad for what. I Anyway, <laughs> I, I think about the, the the asshole manager of that Dollar General, the yeah. bald guy Larry or whatever. Uh huh. Who who was like a real ass to us? Then all of a sudden he became a cop and found God. <laughs> like, what? You don't remember that? The fucking Dollar Tree Larry lore? No. Yeah, where he had shaved head, glasses. He was always he was always yelling at us. Like he was always following us around the store. <laughs> Dude, you don't remember? Hurry up and buy. No, I don't. Well, in hindsight, because I wasn't even thinking about it back then, I uh -huh. wonder if he was being fucking racist. Because it's a possibility. Because I don't know why he was always following us. We were fucking young and naive, didn't see like that shit. So yeah, yeah, it's I, a possibility. I, I don't know. But anyway, um, but uh, but yeah, bro. Wow. Yeah. He became a cop. Yeah. No. He he became a. Co I think it was a cop. He became like a cop. He found God. Um. He got baptized and shit. Okay, that could be either a really good thing or really bad. Yeah, yeah we'll see. Yeah. yeah, he's on his third wife. The other two have just died randomly. No, I'm oh, shit. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm Guadalupe. It's weird. I'm uh, Guadalupe. Oh. Hey, dude, do you want to talk about what you saw? That piece of cinema? Oh, dude. So M. Night Shyamalan's watcher is not. It's not even M. Night. It was his daughter. <laughs> Nah, dude. So Deadpool and Wolverine came out. Yeah. Oh, uh, three minutes. Sorry. <laughs> did you, what do you mean? We can go longer. Who gives a Ooh. shit? We can go a bit longer. Okay. It's, it's fine. Um, But uh, what was I going to say? Deadpool and Wolverine came out. Mm. What, did you see it? No, man. We couldn't get a fucking theater, dude. We forgot, bro. We forgot what a Marvel movie is like, especially Deadpool and fucking Wolverine. We couldn't get a theater. And I was fucking... Having contractions <laughs> last week, dude. I I don't know how you came what? in. I don't know how what? you. I don't. I don't. The, the fucking gall what? to walk on, into this man. podcast room dude, to on. set up the lava lamp <laughs> and to not have seen one of the biggest cinematic I know pieces of film. And I call myself a movie buff. You're ridiculous. Well, you know what, man. Yeah. Brother, it's Marvel season, dude. You can't just casually go buy a ticket. Are, are we on the off year. week of payroll? <laughs> or did you get paid on Friday? I get paid on Friday. You Like this Friday? Uh, last or Friday. Or this Friday? Okay, okay, cool. So there's money sick. in the account. There's no excuse. I was <laughs> sick. I'm checking your financials. <laughs> Iman, oh what are your plans God. today? Um, To watch a movie. <laughs> okay, cool, cool. You want to know what movie it is? You're good. Oh, you're lying to me. You're we got we got no country for old men at the DVD exchange. We're oh hell yeah! That no, tonight. hey, that's a good movie. Okay, all that's right. that's a good movie. All right. But before that, take your girl and go Damn. watch fucking Deadpool and Wolverine. You know what, brother? Check this out. If you could find a fucking theater that isn't sold out, I will give you everything in my wallet. Okay, we're doing <laughs> a fucking debit card with a negative balance. Doing this in real it's time. You just got paid. What do you mean? <laughs> Hold I pay up. rent now, motherfucker. I pay rent now, motherfucker. Listen, Iman, hold up. I, I, dude, I'll I'm find you one you, right man. now. I'll find hey, you one. Come on, don't. Play. Oh, I got one in Waxahachie, Texas. It's got to nah, be nah, here. Nah, nah. Hold up, hold up. We like the Palladium and we like uh, Regal up the street. You, okay, okay. Give me one second here. Fill up the space while I'm. Fill while up I'm the space. This. Fill up the space. Oh, man. Uh, dude, yeah. So I, as mentioned prior, was fucking sick. Guys, 
it's so important, especially living in Texas, that if you are doing something that involves a level of manual labor, working outside, for example, me, you got to make sure you're staying hydrated because constipation is a serious fucking thing. I, I realized that this past weekend. I was on the verge of having to go to the ER because I was so constipated that it was almost debilitating. The pain was insane. Uh, my girlfriend woke up numerous times throughout the night because I was sitting there squirming around in bed. And that shit's pretty serious, man. Um, so make sure that you're staying hydrated, especially in these hotter states like Texas, especially in the hotter parts of the year. Because my dumb ass on work break, you know, I was in a rush, didn't have much time to chill. So I had to just scarf down some food real quick, scarf down a whole fucking cheese pizza and uh, didn't drink a lick of Do you of care water. how close you are to the screen? What do you mean? Do you care how close you are to the screen? I don't want to break my neck. Look at this. You see? You see why I didn't see the movie? Like, Real hey. quick. So make sure you're drinking water because constipation is a serious fucking thing. Jeez. Anyway. I, so Regal I, has some at 240. But you what are you, you, you oh got you got that Godzilla Godzilla seating though. I remember that. <laughs> uh, you know you're gonna and that was terrible. That was IMAX. That was watching IMAX. Godzilla yeah. and we're like bottom mm -hmm. bottom left, like going like whoa. <laughs> Dude, we were desperate, man. Hey, in, in, in IMAX theaters, their screens are tilted forward. I don't so regret Iman e e Monster, e Monster, bro, e Monster, bro. Oh my god. <laughs> Look, this is what, 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 oh, fuck. Hey, what I tell you, Three, brother? No, 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 310 time slot, plenty of seats. 310 time 310 slot? 310 time slot today at Regal. I, I see the bit thing in your eyes. You're doing what? What? No, dead ass. That was it. <laughs> How about you show me? Sorry, here, I'll show you right now. Sorry, I, I clicked out of it. Because I actually would love to go see that movie today. I got to go dude, back to work tomorrow. So, it's, dude, it's, it's great. It's a good one. Weekend. I dug it. I think it's really, have you got anything spoiled for you? No. Dude, no, perfect. No, perfect. No. Okay. Then literally go today. Because now that I've said it, you're going to get TikToks about it. Like, you know. <laughs> okay. We have a lecture Here, this too, is so. the 310 showing. So this is the screen. You got some right here. You got a couple in the back. Okay. You know, so you don't got to be right up on the screen. But even second row is not bad. It is, oh, it's a small theater. I like that. Yeah. This, is, this the, is the one up the road. Huh? This is the Regal Ahib Oaks right here. I got to get on that quick, man. Let me send this to my lady so she can. Hell yeah. Nah, but dude, real, real quick. So that way I can. Y'all can get ready to go see your movie. Yeah, man. But uh, I loved it. Thought it was okay. dope. Especially haven't got anything spoiled for it. Yes. Dude, you're going to fucking love it. Oh, and I'm so excited, Especially man. if you're... Uh, how long have you been watching Marvel movies? I mean, since I was literally before puberty. Fourth grade. What, what's like the non-MCU? What's the first Marvel movie you've seen? Non-MCU? First yeah. Marvel? Oh, God. I mean, The Hulk, 2004? The Hulk movies. That's MCU, isn't it? No, not, not really. Because th there's like... 2008 and beyond is MCU. Gotcha, when they so like, off, you know, man. the Fantastic Four movies, Blade, Spider-Man, Daredevil, like yeah, Punisher, all, not. all that is not MCU. But if you've seen those yeah. and like you remember like the old style of movies. Yes. This pays tribute to a lot of that kind of stuff. Does it really? Yeah, it's really cool. Like it's genuinely pretty like I, I'm excited to hear what your thoughts are. Oh man, I wish so I, good. I wish I could have watched it. Maybe so good. It's okay. It. We'll just doesn't matter. It's gonna be the biggest movie this year. We'll talk about it next week. Um, <laughs> real quick, I want to talk about this. Yeah, I was so excited about that. I mean, I, I loved it. We're we're planning on uh, we're just trying to find time to go see it in IMAX. Honestly, we want to go see it again. See it again. Yeah, we loved it. But when the movie started dropping, mm -hmm. they released the popcorn buckets and. I was real big into what? That's a popcorn. Go yeah, ahead. Let me check it. Yeah, not, not a lot of popcorn. Not a okay. lot of popcorn. But gotcha, you know, gotcha. honestly, this whole new popcorn bucket deal that they're doing, it's like, you know, 10% popcorn bucket. Yeah. 90% display piece, you know? Yes, yes. So yes. they released those. And I really wanted the cup. Okay. Like one of the cups, and I wanted the popcorn bucket, and I wanted the fuck it bucket, and I haven't gotten it yet. Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Okay, hold that. Look, look, look go to Google. So go to Google. Man. Look oh up. Look, uh, just uh, look up a uh, Wolverine. Okay. A uh, popcorn bucket. Um, and then you can add this in in the in the edit. So this. Yeah. So look up Wolverine popcorn bucket, and you're gonna know which one I mean by fuck it bucket. Like, go to images. There you go. Um, <laughs> that is. That's foul. These guys right? are fucking. Dude, <laughs> they just push the envelope in any way imaginable. I, I wanted that one so bad. Um, oh. I couldn't find it anywhere. Oh, um, and man. they're I think they're like 40, 50 bucks. No surprise. Um, but uh, this, but I really wanted this one as well. I just wanted yeah. a Wolverine one because I love Wolverine. Uh -huh. um, 
and uh, they said the Cinemark was going to have them on a certain day. So I, yeah, so I drove to that Cinemark, um, and I got up to the Cinemark, and I was like, I'm here to buy the Wolverine popcorn bucket, and there's like 20 other smelly nerds in there that <laughs> yeah. are also looking for it, and the, guy, and the guy goes, sorry, I've been telling everybody we don't have them yet. Like, the uh -huh. truck hasn't come in with them. You know, yeah. um, so if y'all want to wait around, I don't know how long it's going to take, though. Like, it could be hours, okay. um, but they go sold out really fast. Yeah. And I was on my lunch break. Wow. And I was like, I can't wait around. Like, this was like on a, a fucking like Tuesday yeah. or some shit. And I was like, I can't wait around like that. So I'm leaving. It's literally pouring rain outside. Mm. And I'm like sad walking to the car. And then uh, they didn't have the cups either. And one of the nerds who saw me, saw me in my car and he comes and knocks on the window and goes, hey, they got them at the, uh, at the, what, what was the other fucking Cinemark? It's like New Braunfels Avenue. They're like the New Braunfels Avenue has has them right now i just called they have 50 um he goes but i was on holds for no no not literally new braunfels new braunfels okay. avenue it's okay. like near city base kind of thing gotcha, um gotcha, so gotcha. not like out of town and he goes they have them they said they only have like 50 of them and i was on hold for about 10 minutes they said i was on hold because every other person who was calling was also asking if they had the bucket and i was like oh shit so i drove there immediately i met him there yeah I bought the bucket bought the keychain bought the cup and i was like Perfect, but I ran around yeah. because we were going to go see it at Flix, which is by the office. Yeah, and Flix, I called or uh, I didn't call, but uh, you know, uh, Christina was taking a look at him, and she was like, "Hey, uh, do y'all have the buckets?" And they were like, "No, okay. we don't. We, we we're not going to be releasing them until the movie comes out." But oh. we also didn't know what buckets they were going to have because every movie theater had like different ones. But I knew okay. Cinemark was going to have this one, yeah. so I ran around. All together, two hours of running around Damn. to get this bucket, the cup, and the keychain that I wanted to get. And then they went sold out at the cinema. Mm. So I go through all that, get back. I'm so excited. I'm over the moon. We go see our opening showing at Flix mm. um, on that Thursday, which was like at 3 o'clock. It was like the first showing mm -hmm. of Deadpool and Wolverine. I walk in, and they're like, would you like to buy our Wolverine popcorn bucket? <laughs> no And I was way. like, fuck. Because no I thought they were going to have like, their own. <laughs> yeah. so, like, I, didn't even, I was like, I'm not going to wait till it comes out because they're going go to go sold out. They weren't selling them until the movie was showing. Of course. Which is great wow. for them. But I'm so used to like that shit going sold out yeah. before the movie's even out in theaters that yeah. Blake's actually having a policy. So you did all that in the one all next that. to your house. All that. The one right there next to where we work. <laughs> well, fuck it, dude. At least you got it. I got man. it. At least you got it. Yeah. I got it. But dude, suck. you're going to love it. Okay. Do you have any... Thoughts about the movie without spoiling it. You feel me? Like, like you kind of explained the vibe already, but um, is there something that stood out in the movie? Was it the dialogue? The antagonist was good, or the, I'm sorry, the, uh, yeah, the antagonist? the uh, the nostalgia. Okay, the nostalgia, the mm, biggest thing that sticks out. That's awesome, man. Because, dude, I, I I'm not not spoiling anything, being as vague as I can, but just the so this X Men movie is about. Yeah. Or I'm sorry, it's not an X-Men movie, but a Deadpool movie who's part of the X-Men universe. But the reason I say that, that is because the X-Men and all those characters associated it or associated with it, Wolverine and Deadpool, were part of the Fox movie X-Men universe. Mm, and mm, Disney mm, bought mm. Fox. So now, like, and it's a big part of the movie. And Deadpool says it straight up because he's breaking the fourth wall mm. that Disney now owns, you know, this, you know, uh, Deadpool owns these characters. Like, you know. Yeah. And it's a big part of the movie and they talk about it a bunch. But the reason I'm saying nostalgia is a big takeaway is because this movie mm -hmm. pays so much respect to those old movies. It goes mm -hmm. like, hey, we know y'all grew up watching this version of Deadpool mm -hmm. and this version of Wolverine. We love that. We respect that. Here are the new versions of Deadpool and Wolverine that we're giving to you. Yeah. And here's kind of like the way that we're wrapping it in and making it a love letter to what came before. That is beautiful. Um, and it was, dude, I, I cried. You cried? At the, at the end of the movie. There's like an wow. after credit thing that they kind of do. Yeah. Or like a mid credit thing that they do. And I was just like, oh. I yeah. was like, what the fuck? Yeah. So it was good. It was wow, good. Wow, man. Really good. That I definitely, incredible. I recommend uh, the only, I mean, not even spoiler, but I would recommend obviously having seen the last Deadpool movies and yes. the Wolverine movies. Yes. Um, I know Logan was a big one. Me and you fucking loved when it came out. Mm -hmm. So those are, I would say you have to watch those. Okay. Um, but yeah, man, even, even if like you're someone who hasn't seen, you know, uh, that's also what I really liked. It's, you know, it, it's, you get references and stuff, mm -hmm. you know, just like in any Marvel movie, but you don't have to watch like all 20 fucking seven lovely of, lovely. of the other ones to get it. Yeah. If you've seen the Deadpool movies and you have like an understanding of superheroes, yeah. 
and it's, superhero it's, movies, like you're good. You're it's gonna, casual friendly, huh? You're gonna be locked in. That's yeah, what yeah. I need. Yeah, yeah. There'll be there'll be a lot of cool stuff for for people who have done the homework, like little background shit here and there. And yeah, like, hey, yeah, that's yeah. cool. That's cool. That's cool. But like, you don't need to have watched everything. Lovely, man. Lovely. Okay. Um, I'll ask the last question. Get up out of here. Um, so I'm just curious. Tell me. Logan came out. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Didn't end too well for Wolverine in that movie. Okay? Yeah, he died. I remember walking out or walking into the theater and seeing people walking out. We ran into a guy that you knew and he was crying. Grown man crying. Yeah. Because Logan was done. Which guy? Ah, uh, big guy. He was one of the artists for the, the charity group. Like he would do work for us and shit. Uh, like help make costumes, if I'm not mistaken. Michael? Maybe Michael. Heavier set, Hispanic guy. Quan. I feel like it was Quan. Quan, Quan? sounds familiar. Quan. 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 That sounds familiar. Yeah. Kind of tall. I mean, he's pretty tall. I don't. I, I think. I think you might be right. I okay. Think you might be right. But he either was way, balling. You yeah. Know? And um, it's tough to see like your childhood superhero go away like that. Yeah. And so, was it a big deal when he like announced he was coming back? Was there damn near parades in the street? Or well, yeah. I mean, and he he says it in interviews himself. Like he's like, because they've asked him like, "Are you going to come back again after this movie?" Mm -hmm. And he's all like, "It doesn't matter what I say because you know, in 2017, I said I was done with it." And yeah. Then, like than I wasn't. So, oh. you know, and it, it, it was a big deal, especially like when those set photos came out of him in the yellow suit. Like it was, oh, like I was so excited. This yeah. was my most anticipated movie of this year. Yeah. And it did not disappoint me. Oh, lovely, man. Like, you know. Oh, God, okay. Yeah. And it, I, I had not been this, and I, we talked about it last episode, I haven't been this excited about a movie since The Batman. Yeah. Um, And I have not had a movie deliver in this way genuinely since maybe infinity war <laughs> okay that's enough because now you're getting it on level 10 no i don't want to raise my expectations it's, too it's high it's funny it's action-packed it okay. is just it's one of those movies that like i can't tell you oh i'm gonna go back and watch every marvel movie that's come out this is one that i'm like for a fucking fact yeah i'm gonna watch it more God, like okay. and and if it wasn't for you know being a parent now uh -huh. i would have already seen it another three times you know what i mean Sick. like you know that's a good sign with you when you like rewatch movies you've only done that a handful of times with certain movies so. yeah like back in the day i used to be able to do it a lot more when i really liked a movie and now you know in mm -hmm. in the later half of my life um now that i'm going out the door i, I just don't get the opportunity to <laughs> i feel so. you but uh but yeah man go well, see dude it. yeah see i'm gonna go see it tonight um gotta get going here but uh i'm gonna try to make room today to go see it and then next week bro we'll get fucking super into it man because i'm very excited dude see it fuck yeah mm. all right fucking theater's all packed out now <laughs> i know right you gotta hurry it up uh but uh iman yes sir you know what? what's up i was just about to say we don't really do an ending to this podcast anymore no we don't it just kind of like it kind of just fades out yeah it does. like you know yeah I'm not. I'm not gonna say I minded. We jumped into this podcast so out of the blue. We didn't really have anything planned. No intro. No outros. Yeah, which I think is better because when it just kind of ends out of nowhere. <laughs>